Last time we asked and answered the question, how do you build a theological library? And today we're going to take a look at how do you sort a theological library? So now you own one, but how do you sort it? How do you go through it and decide where things go and how to make things most accessible? And uh, Walter Shaw, a faithful uh, viewer of this channel and also a YouTuber himself, recently put out a video fairly similar to this one, and I had already made the plans to make this video, but he beat me to it. <clears throat> and so links uh, to that video and also the previous videos in this series will be in the description down below. Shaw mostly answered um, what are the different ways to sort a library, and that was my original plan, but instead now I have changed it to how am I sorting my library. Uh, it's not a perfect system, but I figure I can go more in depth into that than uh, multiple other different ways to sort a library. So uh, with all of that in mind, um, also keeping in mind that uh, this is not, I'm not claiming this is the best way to sort a library, nothing of that sort or nature. Uh, if you have a better system, feel free to put that in the comments down below. Uh, but with all of that out of the way, let me welcome you to Petra Publications if you are new. Uh, my name is Davis, and here on this channel I basically just review books, mostly reformed Christian books. So sometimes I do step outside of that realm and may even review a book that's not even Christian if I found it edifying and would like to share that with you. Uh, if you're new, then I welcome you to subscribe, and I'd love to have you join us. And uh, if you've been watching for quite some time now, uh, links to my Patreon and PayPal are down in the description. Thank you so much for your support. Um, that, I believe, is all I have for this thing. Uh, now I'm going to actually jump behind the camera and show you what's behind me here and the various ways that I have sorted my library. Now, um, I did a library tour a couple weeks ago, so I'm not going to dive too much into what I have in my library. If you'd like to see that, that is also linked in the description. This is simply to answer the question, how do you sort a library? God bless. All right, I went ahead and uh, turned on another light so you can see a little bit better. So uh, essentially what I have here is everything categorized and sorted by category. And if you go back and watch the last episode in this series, um, which was how to build a theological library, uh, you'll see that I've sorted theology into eight categories, or at least the, the library of theology into eight categories. And um, most of what you'll see here are those eight categories. And there's some, some things that don't fit into those things, but most of them uh, are going to be in those categories, and I have them sorted that way. So over here, and I just added these, you won't see these in my library tour, but I'm going to leave them here. I, I think this is a great addition to sorting a library. And that is these labels here all throughout the library. And it looks a little bit tacky, but it keeps things much more organized. And I like that a lot. So the first thing you'll see here is, uh, well, let's see if I can get the camera to work right commentaries and reference, and pardon my writing, it looks like chicken scratch, but it is still slightly legible. Uh, but yeah, what you'll see is each, each shelf has a label, and uh, it's much easier to find a specific thing that way. And then you'll come over here and you'll see uh, systematic theology. Okay, well, all of this shelf is systematic theology. Same thing here, you'll see, um, uh, let's see here, the works of, and uh, that'll be Ryle, uh, Trail, Gurnall, and Top Lady here. Miscellaneous theology, more miscellaneous theology. Um, another shelf of the works of. This is the works of Jay and Spurgeon, and I just put Jay and Spurgeon because it's not complete works of anything. Um, this is the biography section. Down here you have American uh, history. Over here you have church, worship, and music, um, just kind of, you know, hymnals. Um, I have common prayer, uh, common worship. I have um, various uh, music books that have nothing to do with church music, but uh, still kind of there. Okay, so now, what is the advantage of sorting your books the way I have sorted them? The advantage here is that because they're sorted categorically, um, I can, as a full-time student who is in a school 12 hours away from home, 
Um, I can ask my mother to find a book for a paper that I'm writing in my library um, <laughs> much easier than if they were all just randomly scattered about. Uh, for instance, if I need some sort of Ryle thing, she knows that all of my Ryle is right here. Uh, if I needed a specific systematic theology, I can just ask her, Mother, could you please come in here and find a specific systematic, let, we'll say um, systematic theology by Burkhoff, right? She can come over here, find systematic theology, and immediately Burkhoff is right here. Okay, so that's one advantage. Um, accessibility from other people. And that's something I'm going to really uh, drive during this series. What What is a main purpose of a library? It's to share with other people. And if other people can't access your library easily, then it kind of defeats that whole purpose. So for me, yes, I know where all of my books are, but I want other people who don't know immediately where they are to be able to come in and find them rather easily. So it sorts them out that way. Secondly, another advantage of this is that um, when I write my will and testament, so for older people, obviously I'm not looking into this quite yet, but if you're getting up in age and you're looking to downsize your library or you're putting it in your will um, <clears throat> and you have things categorized, let's say all of this, this is reference and commentary, this whole shelf here. Let's say by the time I am closer to dying or write my will or however that plays out, uh, let's say I have 200 volumes, rough estimate. Understanding my library is not very large right now, but hopefully by then it will be, and I will have a lot of commentaries. So let's say that I have a large number of commentaries. Um, everything's sorted by category, so I can say I'd like to give X amount of this category to this specific person. Or, depending on how large the section is, or you know uh, how much that person would use the books or you know whatever that is um, I can then say I'd like to give all of my commentaries and reference books to this specific person or uh, organization or however it is that you're doing that. Um, it is much easier that way I think obviously I'm not to that place yet but you don't have to deal with um, books accidentally getting added or taken away or missing or things like that. Everything's sorted by category so uh, if I were to die tomorrow and I wanted to give these to, I don't even have a friend named Bob, but if I did, if I wanted to give them all to Bob, all someone would have to do is come in here, find commentaries and reference books, this whole shelf, and give them to Bob. Um, same thing over here, systematic theology. All of those can go there. Or if I say I want to give the top shelf of uh, commentaries and reference to Bob, Bob can now have the top shelf of that. Everything's sorted in that way. So when you're downsizing, it makes things so much easier. So everything is sorted by category. That's how I sort my library. Um, hopefully that helped you in some way. Um, again, many other ways to sort a library. This is only one of probably thousands. Uh, if you have other ways of sorting libraries, uh, why don't you comment that down below? I'd love to hear some different ideas and styles, I suppose you could say. Um, I always love hearing from you in the comments section down below. Uh, that is all I have for you today. Hopefully I will see you again very soon, Lord willing. God bless. Bye.